Hey guys, it's Vic, and today we're going to look at our 13th entry in the Victionary, the Carbon Roller. The Victionary is a series of guides to help provide a starting point for players looking to pick up new weapons, or those who want some tips moving forward with the weapons they like. The Carbon Roller is a fast-moving roller class weapon that comes equipped with auto bombs and an ink storm. It's a unique kit that lets you have ways of tracking or stopping your foes long enough to let you get the jump on them. The Carbon Roller is all about map control. That's an important fact. When you can plan out every single step of your approach and land your hits in succession, you can get some amazing gameplay moments, even if your movement is a little sloppy. The issue comes with making sure your hits land, though, because the Carbon Roller's hitbox is very small. Its short range and low damage output mean you really have to be in your opponent's faces to get that center of the roller requirement that rollers need to land a splat. Just know that the Carbon Roller can do as low as 25 damage with a horizontal flick and 40 damage with a vertical flick. By having a lot of movement options, and the turf being well inked, you can dip, dive, and surprise your opponents with your quick wit. Being able to turn the camera quickly, with motion controls, can also help to secure a splat if your opponent starts to move while you're already mid-swing. That way, you can still catch them. Now, splat zones with the carbon roller can be interesting. Why? The carbon roller can get its ink storm in 160 points, which is very low. If you're not dying too often, you'll be able to pop rain after rain and keep opponents off of your precious flat zone. Just remember that an ink storm alone cannot always capture both zones, especially if your opponents are doing a good job at shooting against it. I'm sure you've had a time where you're playing where you see the ink storm coming over the zone and you just stand there and cover it up and the ink storm really doesn't do anything. You'll want to use your ink storms in conjunction with your team's specials, or at minimum, when your teammates are also nearby. Ideally, They'll see your inkstorm and work alongside it to recapture a lost zone. You can also throw your inkstorm behind enemy territory to force opponents back into the open so you can get a splat. Because of the carbon roller's short range, you won't be able to easily catch more passive, long-range players very easily. You'll have to play smarter and make them play your game. The best way to do this is to make them leave their comfort zone with pressure from inkstorms and autobombs. Your autobombs can be especially useful because if you can still see them, they will tell you exactly where your opponent is running away to. If the opponent is moving closer to you, you may be able to catch them off guard and net a splat. When you're not sharking through the splat zone or nearby the splat zone, nothing stops you from working to try and recapture it. A couple of your quick, short flicks should be able to at least bring it back to neutral in many cases. Just make sure no one's watching you, so you don't become a sitting duck by mistake. The Carbon Roller faces trouble on tower control, because when you're on that tower, you can't really do very much thanks to your lack of range. However, your fast movement speed can make you a tricky target to hit. Don't forget that rollers still keep their higher movement speed when they're on gratings, including the gratings that are on the edge of the tower. Smart movement can net you those last few points and earn you a lead. If you see an opponent climbing the tower towards you, wait until you see the very edge of their character climb the tower and then immediately swing. The Carbon Roller can get a kill in 12 frames with its swing. This is a trait that's shared only with the 52 Gal, which needs both of its shots to land to get that high speed splat. If your hit lands, and it does 100 damage, your opponent is done for. If you're below the tower, and you want to try and hit an opponent on the tower, don't forget you can do a horizontal flick up in the air by making sure to hit the swing button, and then jumping. If the opponent is on your side of the tower, it'll make it a lot easier to hit them. Autobombs and Inkstorm work well to force opponents off the tower. For example, a double autobomb build will apply double the pressure to make opponents get off that tower. The minimum for double autobomb is going to be four subs of sub saver. However, if you do this amount, you won't be able to make a swing after you actually throw those bombs. All you'll be able to do is make a small puddle that you can heal in. So if you're throwing two bombs, make sure you have somewhere safe to go. The tracking radius of your autobombs is big enough that if they see an opponent below the tower, they will walk off the tower and go after them. You can also use your ink storm to slow down opponents from running away from the tower, which will let you run in and get a splat. Basically, just realize it's always better to be applying constant, offensive pressure instead of waiting around for things to happen with the carbon roller. When your team is trying to make their push, you can move ahead of the tower to cut off opponents who are trying to shoot at your teammates. Especially at lower ranks, you may see opponents that focus heavily on the tower and forget to watch their sides. Understanding the proper opportunity to strike and when not to approach can help you do better with the carbon roller. And one more honorable mention 
is that when you're super jumping to the tower in tower control with this weapon, you can begin to wind up your swing as you're landing. If you can see someone's waiting for you when you land, why not wind up that swing and try to trade with them? The more often you super jump, the better you'll probably get at this technique. Rainmaker can be hard for the carbon roller because it doesn't do very much damage to the Rainmaker's shield. You can do a lot right and then be unable to pop the shield against high damage fire from your opponents. I don't recommend running Object Shredder on the Carbon Roller to counter this, though. If you want to pop the Rainmaker Shield, try to do it alongside your teammates. You do, however, make a great Rainmaker Carrier. Because you're probably wearing a lot of swim speed, you'll be able to move the Rainmaker around quicker than a majority of your teammates. When you're not carrying the Rainmaker, you can swim ahead or to the side of your teammate to be their personal entourage. You don't want to be behind the Rainmaker Carrier, since all you can do is defend them from flanks and not stop other opponents. By being in front, you'll be able to body block shots and slap at opponents that try to close the distance between them and your Rainmaker. The quick vertical flicks of the Carbon Roller can also be used to guarantee a path for you and your team to swim through if the coast is clear. Your Ink Storms are great for causing chaos in the middle of either your own push or an enemy push. Swim through the Ink Storm and pick off opponents that haven't taken the opportunity to run away yet. And of course, there's also Clam Blitz. Because Clam Blitz is a map control oriented mode and the Carbon Roller needs map control to function, it's more important than ever that you don't overstep your boundaries unless the turf is at least a little bit your color. If you try to drop down into a pile of clams with no ink coverage, you might find yourself quickly overwhelmed. The only way the Carbon Roller can cover the ground is to first swing and then paint. It's a situation you want to avoid being in generally. If you need to make an escape, Use vertical swings instead of horizontal ones so you have more space to move around. Because the Carbon Roller wants to be an aggressive weapon, don't be afraid to take a chance and do a flank when your opponents aren't watching you. As a bonus, being a flanker means that your teammates can also jump to you with super clams. If you have a few clams with you, you can also contribute to creating a power clam if your teammates jump to you without enough. Because you can splat so fast with the Carbon Roller, you can quickly end a power clam push before it even gets started. Don't be afraid to swing directly at a close by opponent to make them drop their clam. When an opponent has a power clam, their location is shown on your screen. Take advantage of this to keep opponents from being able to come into your base. Your auto bombs also can waste precious time for opponents, as they'll force your opponents to either rush in past your auto bomb or back away from your goal. In the first case, they might now be close enough to let you splat them. In the second case, it's likely there might be a teammate a little further out that can now finish off this distracted opponent. The Carbon Roller benefits from anything that will improve its strengths. Because the Carbon Roller is fast, it loves extra swim speed to get its job done even quicker. It also lets you evade more fire and keeps yourself one step ahead of your opponent. Because the Carbon Roller has such glaring flaws with its kills, Quick Respawn also can't hurt. When you fail to actually land that killing swing, you can come back faster and stronger than ever. Remember that you can surprise opponents with Ninja Squid, but you face a swim speed penalty. Even now, you'll see a lot of roller opponents will run Ninja Squid, but that doesn't mean that you should go running up to opponents just because you have it. In fact, an eagle-eyed player will almost always see you if you try to do this. The sound of your swimming also isn't muffled by Ninja Squid, so opponents can hear you approaching. The gear set I was using while testing the Carbon Roller had just enough Sub Saver to be able to get double auto bombs, as well as one main of Quick Respawn so I could come back faster. Just remember, if you do get a splat, you won't actually earn anything from your quick respawn. Use that QR to bolster your confidence and go in for a kill. That's all I had to say about the Carbon Roller. You can get splats faster with this than any other roller, meaning the element of surprise is always your best friend. Speed and skill can get you very far with it, as long as you aren't being tracked too much by opponents. If players do know where you are, you'll have to move around a lot to avoid being defeated before you can do your damage. Use auto bombs to make sure that players move out of the way, and ink storms to give your team space, or to take it away from your opponents. Typically with the Carbon Roller, the longer a 1v1 fight draws out, the worse off it is for you. If you're jumping around and flicking a lot, it's pretty easy for opponents to find and dispose of you. The best thing you can do is to learn quick flanking paths and practice being strategic on when you should and shouldn't go in for a flank. If your team is down, for example, you don't want to be gone for too long. Leaving your opponents alone in a 3v4 situation isn't ideal, and if players find out about your sneak attack, you'll be sent back to spawn anyway. However, when your team has an advantage, don't be afraid. You might be able to catch players returning to the battlefield by surprise as a bonus. Thanks, Splat Kirby, for the suggestion. 
Leave a comment below on what weapon you'd like me to look at next time. I always pick a comment randomly, so you could be next. Interested in other weapons? Take a look at the ones I've already done via the Victionary playlist, and see if a weapon that suits your style has already been covered. Don't be afraid to leave your own thoughts on the Carbon Roller or other weapons in the comments below. You might be able to improve your own play, or help others by taking time to talk strategy. Now, some have been suggesting for me to expand the Victionary episodes to cover both variants of a weapon instead of just one, but I wanted to hear your thoughts on that as well. It's a good idea, but it might hurt the number of strategies and ideas that I can put in for each individual weapon, unless I increase the length of the guides by quite a bit. I could imagine it being a good idea for weapons that are older, like the Carbon Roller for example, that players have at least seen around and about. And of course, thank you for watching this Victionary, and have a nice day! While I was editing this, the channel also broke 6,000 subs, so uh, definitely thank you for that. It's an honor to be on this wild ride with you guys, and I hope that I can keep bringing stuff you guys like in the future. Thank you a lot. Ah oh, wait, we gotta have like, a funny meme or something, so uh, smash the like button in half and chop the bell in two! Woo!